Hi everyone, welcome to episode 5 of Emma's Happy List. I'm Emma and this week I am joined by my very good friend Tom Quantrill. So without further ado, here we go. There he is. Oi, oi. It's so nice to see you. For some reason, my headset's not working. I'm going to try and stick this in and out. Mate, you're not going to prop my call centre headset. And now I can't hear you. Mm. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, ah. I can hear you back. There we go. That is a massive jug of water that you drink. <laughs> yeah, what happened to a good old glass? I just thought I should sound like fully pronunciating all yeah. of my words, so... You always have a glass of water, don't you? Do I, do I have to get subtitles for this one if I make it into a video? <laughs> you're not, mate. You've got you've got a stronger accent than me. I do not. Yes, you do. That is not true. Oh. Bye, aye, mate. Oh no, that was terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's not good, mate. That's not. Just How are you doing? Well. I'm very, very good, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right as well. Thank you. I'm excited to actually get another recording done. Yeah, I know. I've been uh, sitting listening to them today. I know, um, really, like, obviously, the, the chat you have with Ryan and stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, I listened to the ones that you had of yourself, so I thought you'll probably most likely expand into doing Zoom calls and stuff and uh, yeah, getting some, some people featured on the podcast because there's only so much talking to yourself that you can do. Well, pretty much, yeah. I thought it was a good idea to um, get technology involved. So... I'm just going to like kick off straight off because it's all about having a chat anyway and I'm excited to hear what you've been up to but first of all did you have a happy list before today? No I did not. Um, okay. I probably if you asked us what makes me happy obviously there's a lot of quantifiable things and I think the thing I first took from listening to the first couple of episodes were um, you'd probably expect people to say things like oh my dog or skiing or hiking or my family stop stealing um, my happy list <laughs> no i know but like i think what i like quite liked about the two that you both kind of said especially yours i think i had the same kind of reaction as ryan you're just like uh, floating in water and you're like ah, okay so it's not just like literal objects it's more so anything that makes you happy it can be from like the smell of fresh bread yeah. to a concept or just like you say, a simple feeling or as he was saying, kind of walking on sand and things. So, um, wait, don't tell me is... yours. No, 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 I'm not going to tell No, no, I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. I was just saying my thought processes when I was thinking of what to, to choose. Yeah. Um, you can kind of maybe go down a route of something that maybe a lot of people relate to or something very niche. I have some extremely niche ones, but, um, I thought it would be better maybe to choose something that was a bit more of a, a talking point for most people. That's something can, people can relate to. Yeah. Uh, and also something that um, is definitely relatable between myself and you. Which and also I've... PG, PG things, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, mate, it's, it's yeah, PG. Okay. I'm just checking. Yeah. I'm just checking. Yeah. I, I just want to clarify that I have no idea what anyone is going to come on to the podcast and say. So I just want well, to, especially with you, I just want to make sure that we're on the same page here. This okay. is a family friendly podcast. <laughs> Well, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking before I came on, I thought, okay, what, what should I say and what should I not say? Apart from also, the odd thought, swear. <laughs> well, I did think, am I allowed to swear or not? Which is quite difficult. I They're try sentence enhancers. Best. They're sentence enhancers. We're okay. Yeah, I'm not like, I'm not like Tourette's level of swearing, but I kind of use them to emphasize a point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Okay, yeah. I'll keep it, I'll keep it PG. Maybe, tw- okay. maybe 12A, 12A. Okay, so for the sake of everyone who's listening to the podcast, I think we should just tell everyone how we know each other for a start, because how does one little lady from Swansea meet one little lad from South Shields? Do you want to go ahead and tell everyone? Uh, yes, I think, I think what, what year was it? 2015? I'm going to say 2015, yeah. I think yes, so. I think that's my first year on Lake Garda. You were... Yeah, so yes. um, essentially it was my first year working in Italy on a summer. Yes. I worked on Lake Garda. Uh, you were working there at the same time, but on a different part of the lake. But I was. We didn't really kind of really meet each Well, we met each other, but we didn't really kind of chat or get on or kind of like really make no, it was a connection like, on the lake. So we had like, what was it, two airport days. So we had to go to the airport as a company um, twice a week. 
and that was probably when I saw you and and it was just like hi are you all right how was your week how are you yeah. how's things going and that was that that was kind of the extent of our friendship I would say at that point would you agree? yeah I think um definitely I think it's one of those for anyone who's done seasons who's listened to this you know that you meet people on seasons who are like really lovely you like get to know them and stuff but you know that maybe at the end of the season you might Never not gonna see them speak again, to them again. Just, <laughs> like no disrespect to that person you just don't have a massive spark whether it's because you're on different parts of the lake or you don't get to spend a lot of time together or yeah whatever reason it is uh and i always think it's funny at the end of seasons there's always lots of people who are like oh yeah i'll definitely come down to manchester and see you yeah we'll come to scotland you're like yeah, that's not gonna happen <laughs> there's some people who you know you're gonna see again and some people you don't yeah. i do think at the end of that summer if someone had said do you think you'll see emma again um i probably would have said most likely not um mm-hmm. because we didn't stay in contact i know i think I spoke to you briefly a little bit over Facebook when you went to New Zealand. I think maybe about two years later. Oh, maybe, maybe, yeah. A little bit. We had a bit of a chat and a catch up, and I think we had a bit more of a, a click then because we talked a little bit more um, about the kind of vibe you were giving out and stuff, and just a little bit more about life rather than just kind of the general like, "Hi, how are you doing? How's your yeah. week?" I was going um, through a big old like process of healing, I think, in New Zealand. So a lot of what I was putting out there was sort of on your level anyway. So just for the sake of everyone he- listening, Tom is Mr. Positivity in human form. Am I right? Oh, at sometimes, mate. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah well, it's very, you try it's very and, difficult to stick to that sometimes. Yeah, but you encourage it in others, don't you? Which is important, I feel. So you encourage like people to look at the bright side. You encourage like people to be grateful and make the most of their life and stuff. And it's it's I think before sort of I went to New Zealand and a lot of our conversations were like on the superficial level. Whereas yeah, afterwards things got a bit um different like my perspective on life changed and I feel like you sort of picked up on that vibration whether you knew that like consciously or not I feel like um I think I think similar I think it was January I think it was a member the year now it was January 2018 when we were speaking to each other because I was in um Cormier in Italy and I think one of the reasons we kicked a little bit more then like you say the difference between the superficial kind of just general crack on that we had and when we were first met um to that conversation I think we both been through something really really difficult just before that yeah. I was going through something really difficult in my life I think you had been obviously um yeah. and I think we both kind of approached the healing process of that in a similar way and I think yeah. that's why we obviously ended up um clicking a little bit and obviously going along the lines that we are now so yeah so really what nice happened yeah exactly so we so we had like a superficial friendship on the lake then we connected slightly on Facebook and then I bumped into you in London didn't I <laughs> Yeah, you kind of ambushes in London. When you I spoke did. in London, you, <laughs> you just kind of walked up as like we've been friends forever. And it did make well. me at this point, when I walked away from speaking to you at the ski, uh, the ski show, I was like, oh shit, did, did we speak a lot on the lake? Like, were we a lot closer than, <laughs> than I thought? Because like, Emma was like really, really super friendly. And hey, I am super I friendly. Was, no, I know you are, but it was just <laughs> quite nice that like, it, I feel like the way we'd connected a bit over the internet, yet yeah, that didn't diminish from um a physical meeting of actually being able to have a chat and kind of and it was totally different I don't know if I you were probably completely overwhelmed but basically when I bumped into Tom he was the one that said oh yeah you should come visit me in Austria not realizing that I'm exactly the type of person to do that (laughs) yeah 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 and I'm exactly (laughs) the kind of person who offers their bed up without uh thinking Thinking of of the consequences (laughs) yeah definitely and then I sort of hired you as my drone slash photographer slash marketing help for the business um but I think that week so I went actually went out to Austria so he didn't expect me to take him up on his offer but I absolutely did because you know when the universe gives you opportunities like that you can't say no to it and I've done it ever since really haven't I (laughs) yeah exactly mate definitely (laughs) Uh, I think that week um we just had a blast and it was so much it was so funny wasn't it it was just such a fun week so uh that's kind of where we proper we proper solidified the friendship. Yeah, I mean, it was an awesome week. I really enjoyed it. Um, mm-hmm. I think that was probably one of my best winter seasons. And yeah. the week you got there, we covered quite a bit of ground. We covered quite a few resorts. We did. And we it just had really uh, good yeah, we had a bit of a had a bit of a ball. It was good. It was really funny. We got a bit drunk many a time. <laughs> just a little, a little bit drunk, a little bit political. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> but 
you now you can't get rid of me and now you're featuring on my podcast so yeah very happy to mate very happy to so thank you for i being have here. Uh, obviously i have come here with a purpose um as you mentioned the first question did i have a happy list prepared before uh, no not necessarily i do have things that i gravitate towards that that make me happy and um like i said i was going to think of it maybe a really niche thing um or possibly a concept but then i thought actually something that a lot of people are probably craving at the minute which i really really enjoy which is just a really nice simple thing um is just a beer just a, a beer in any form <laughs> a very very simple beer i think it comes in a really nice form of meditation because yes okay a beer is an alcoholic beverage but it's kind of the a little bit more kind of chilled, versatile version of a coffee. You can take your mate for a pint. And you don't have to get kind of drunk. You can just have a nice, chilled chat, kind of shoot the shit about life. No yep. problem whatsoever. Um, it can be like a Friday night release. You could be having a beer on the mountain in the sunshine. It could be on holiday. It could just be, you know, celebrate. I think it's so versatile to apply to so many happy situations that it That's has to was, be up there. I was literally just going to say that. It was like it's such a versatile thing to do, isn't it? Like, just let's just have a beer because it can be yeah. anywhere where's your like it can you think of somewhere right now so if you could be anywhere plonked at any time of day in anywhere of the world at like any season with like a pint in your hand one what pint it would it be and where would you be do you think oh okay so there's probably two answers to this question because there's the kind of instagrammy superficial answer that is the good location good bar and good beer however i think that can all be kind of forgotten about if you've got good company oh okay so, oh yeah and who's your company other than me of course <laughs> well that's what i was gonna say so if i'm gonna go down the route i'll get the instagrammy superficial one out the way first so okay. i think it's gonna have to be somewhere in the dolomites yeah. um yeah favorite place in the world absolutely stunning there's so many different bars and mountains restaurants and stuff uh, and a vice beer is probably my go-to choice yeah nice Quite, and yeah like a, it's like a meal in a glass it's so heavy and I think I'd, <laughs> I'd never really had one until I went on a season there um like seven years ago when I got introduced to them yeah uh, by my uh, New Zealand friend uh Jake and yeah that's uh, they're the, the they're the, yeah they're the wheat based beer aren't they the yeah wheat, it's like a, a celiac nightmare but uh, yeah <laughs> it is uh it is very nice so if you go to go to Dolomites have a, a wheat beer maybe in uh the Tony Demet hut Mm. up on the mountains very nice in, in Val Gardena but the reason I mentioned the beer is because I have obviously had the the uh, pleasure of sharing quite a few beers with you which has been very nice yes uh, we have one had of a the few that came to mind was uh one of my favorite beers like a, a three four o'clock afternoon beer when the sun's Oof. still out mm. and especially in a ski resort we went to the um the pole down in Alpac last year when we're sitting outside yes I remember when the sun's shining on you you can have like even just half a beer and your yeah. skin just feels so lovely tingly spring. Oh, <laughs> do mate, you know what heaven. i usually get a half pint because i like i know you do i know it's a disgrace on this i know it's a disgrace but it's actually That's there's logic to you're it a half pint person shut up <laughs> I, I knew i can go like an hour without a short joke with you it's crazy but it's because it stays cold so when I have like a pint I, I obviously don't drink a pint quick enough for it to stay cold and I hate like that last bit where it's like lukewarm beer and I hate drinking lukewarm beer I hate it I would much yeah. rather have like a half pint of like really fresh beer like all away and buy like two of them than you know and also I can't keep up with your pints anyway so it's not my fault <laughs> <laughs> no i know mate I, I completely agree with you and there is logic in it because sometimes you're working your way through that last little bit of pint and it's flat or warm yeah. whereas it's sad to admit when you see the americans drinking the little beers it's, <laughs> it, oh, it just looks so bad but it, it makes a lot more sense it I know does what you mean. make sense and my other question was so you said the dolomites but you didn't say um what season is it going to be some because you've been summer Ooh. and winter there haven't you yeah, so I am I am a big winter fanatic and I do like my skiing. Um, I think my winter season, I do prefer winter season in general, mm. but probably the best season I've had across the 11 or 12 I've done has been um, in the Dolomites in the summer. Yeah. In 2017, it was really, really nice. It's just really beautiful temperature. It's quite quiet. Loads of rock climbing, loads of via ferrata, hiking, mountain biking, yeah. walking. It's just really nice. So I think, yeah, 
that was probably my best season. I was in really good shape. Um, yeah. <laughs> I felt good. Hiking everywhere. Nice, yeah, I mean, I had a nice little, I had a nice little jolly up there. It was a really nice little <laughs> summer season in Selva. I would go back there in a heartbeat. Yeah, it is beautiful. The Dolomites is like one of my favourite places. But I think like a lot of people think about Italy and they think about like the Amalfi Coast and Rome and places like that. But the mountain regions are like incredible out of this world. But also, the air is so fresh there. Like, yeah, you, it's still warm and it's still hot and it still feels like summer. But the air is just like so fresh, isn't it? It's like the most pure oxygen you can like imagine. Oh, mate. It's, Sorry, I'm, I'm, like put, I'm say, putting it in your head now. Yeah. So we're in, we're in lockdown right now and we're thinking about these things. <laughs> Five weeks into being in the house and you're talking about fresh air in the mountains. That's just, yeah, that's no, torture. It's, it's not, I'm sorry, I do apologise. But we've, you know, we have to talk about these things because they're the things that, like you say, they do bring us joy. Yeah, so, no, I know. And it's like I say, I think sitting, reading through, uh, reading through, listening through um, the last couple of episodes, actually, I think it's quite an important time to have something like this. Um, and that's what going back to the episode you were where you were chatting about floating in water. Yeah. Um, I really like that because that's really related. Really, but before you even said Lake Garda and you're talking about floating in water, I thought about when I have done that myself. Yeah. Um, so nice is lying on that lake, especially at night time <laughs> and you're looking up, it's clear sky, you're looking at the stars, it's just it it blows yeah. your socks off. It is beautiful. Really I mean nice. I really love floating in the sea as well, but I think like there's something about like a really still lake that just gives yeah. you like such a peaceful like like what's the, like being present it's really difficult I think in like and nowadays to be present and it just gives you like such an easy route to just be fully like present like enjoy what's going on around you like enjoy the feeling of your own skin type of thing so and obviously you feel weightless so it gets rid of like any aches and pains have you ever um, looked into the, um, I forget the name of the call now, those like uh, pods you can go in, which are like oh, that. Oh yeah, the, um, yeah, they're like flotation pods. Yeah, flotation. you can do like an hour in them and you're supposed to kind of um, have like really, really kind of vivid um, yeah. dreams or you're there or kind of have a bit of clarity. So I can completely understand why you see that as a, a form of meditation. It's, it's so nice on the lake. That was actually on my to-do list before we went into lockdown. I literally had, I priced it all up and everything because there is one nearby and I was like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it, but um, I'll have to wait for obviously current times to pass before I do that. But I, d- I still try and float in the bath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like tuck my little legs up. <laughs> nice. You can yeah, just imagine like a, it, can't you? <laughs> it's like a pound land isolation pod. Can... Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. And then, so that was your, um, that was like your Instagrammy one, like your Instagrammy. And what about your genuine, authentic location where it doesn't matter if you document it or not? Um, oh, we should probably mention that, like why, why Instagram and like aesthetic and everything is important to you though, because obviously you're like an avid photographer and you do it freelance and t- like, tell me about that a bit more. I know, but for everyone else's uh, sake. Yeah, so before I come to like the genuine one, like I'd I'd like to say that as a disclaimer, like I do maybe have an actual soul and I enjoy a pint without taking a picture of it. <laughs> like I can't actually. There is times I have actually been for the and not taking a picture before. I don't but believe no, you, but uh, yeah. So I I do think that's actually quite an important part because I do think, especially with like marketing and social media and stuff, there yeah. is times the best beers I've had have been in possibly the least picturesque locations um but once again it's the company so finding that really great bar or restaurant with that really great view to take that picture of that beer for like kind of promotion or like whatever it is um social media and stuff um it's good but often enough you will find that those bars and restaurants especially now are popping up with this in mind and they don't have a great deal of soul and i think going back to the dolomites there's a lot of bars and restaurants that i've been in where there's maybe this one that's been handed down generation to generation to generation and it's some old little ramshackled hut on the mountain where the grandma's making grappa out of a bath in the back and it's just really 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 lovely and authentic (laughs) but maybe they don't have the really kind of instagrammable picture perfect balcony with the influencer shot yeah and i think it's quite important to see that um the difference between the two so quite a genuine nice beer that i like going for um is my dad's local in south shields okay um it's like a like a real ale house uh, down on the river, uh, down on the Tyne, next to the ferry port. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called the Alum Ale House. Um, really, really, really nice little place. Uh, the guy who owns it, absolutely hilarious. And it's quite like a little 
local place where like on a Sunday they still like put some pork pies and chips and that on the on the t- on the bar and that and it's yeah. got like loads of different real ales and stuff and stuff from the local area and you get all your locals in there and it's just got quite a nice atmosphere it's really really nice inside but it's just a proper like old man pub and because okay. I'm not often home um, when I do get to go for there I had to have a pint with my dad it's quite a quite a nice thing just to sit in there and just kind of shoot the shit with my dad and have a bit of a chat yeah so yeah your dad I was going to ask like who is your company in that um pub but obviously your dad is your company in that instance yeah definitely man yeah I don't really drink that much with my parents <laughs> yeah is that for any particular reason it's just uh it's just I feel I don't know I don't enjoy it <laughs> I feel like I'm well, being enjoy- like drinking in their company I, I mean I love my parents and we like in general like we are very close and supportive but as a rule I tend not to drink at the same time as they drink <laughs> because yeah, but you're not as much into drinking it's, I don't think it's as much as part of your you're not as big of a drinker as me when we've been out and stuff and I think no, it's I'm not, not as kind of no which is actually probably everyone who knew me at university would be like, what? Emma doesn't drink as much because at university I was like <laughs> pretty into it. <laughs> um, because, so my right, I don't know if, you, do you even know what I studied in uni? Have I told you this before? You, you will have, I should know because I'm your friend, but I don't <laughs> think. So I actually studied English and creative writing in uni, right? I th- yeah, I think I did know that. And my best writing came from when I was a little bit half cut 100% obviously you'd have to go over it in the morning and get rid of all the typos <laughs> but the most like flamboyant descriptions or not flamboyant but maybe the, the better descriptions and that sort of thing the creativity definitely flows a bit more when you're when you're half cut so yeah. yeah I can recommend if you're thinking about a writing task I can definitely recommend that yeah fair play miss fair play do yeah. you get uh do you have a few bevies before you do anything on the website or write a blog post or anything now or no not anymore not anymore <laughs> <laughs> I am like actually terrible because I am your classic um binge drinker now I I looked at the definition of like binge drinking not so long ago and I was like oh my god that's me so like I won't drink for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and then like when I drink yeah. I really drink like probably you know spirits and like mixing and all sorts and then I'm in a hell of a mess uh, like not long afterwards but <laughs> I was like, I was reading up on it and that is classic binge drinking, which is like the worst type of drinking you can do for yourself. You're better off yeah. like having a glass of wine a day. So, yeah. but anyway, I don't, I, just, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever change in that way. <laughs> if you, if you frown on me for having a rum for breakfast, but it's that the health, that's the healthier option. Oh, that's the health benefit, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're just, you. you're just keeping your body on a constant state of warning rather yeah. than it just relaxing for a couple of weeks and I then love, it, it... I love how honest you were just then you didn't even try and say rum and coke because whenever I've seen you pour a rum and coke it is literally like 95% rum 5% coke you just do the coke for like the color do you yeah so it looks nicer for your picture so like, oh just there we the go In the, the instagram picture yeah yeah okay. that's exactly what it is for the gram <laughs> I'm trying to think actually so like on your point I'm trying to think of where I would like a pint right now I'm thinking, yeah so what's your do, do do your both yours your kind of instagrammy hmm. superficial shot that you've done and all somewhere you've been for a pint that you're like that's something off the list that i say I'd, i've done but yeah okay and then it's, also your kind of your go-to yeah it's quite it's quite a difficult one because i have actually like had pints in a really lovely places all over the world like really beautiful aesthetically pleasing places um, but I'm going to keep it close to home because we actually have some really nice like beaches down our way. So down the Gower, I've spoken about the Gower before, but it is a yeah. big part of like life down here. And um, yeah, down the Mumbles. Have you heard of the Mumbles? It's quite like well known, I think. No, you did mention it. And I know it in the, the past couple of episodes, you've been on like the, the Wales promotion tourism board. I have. So, um, wow. I think Ryan mentioned some way, I can't remember the name of it some cove or some bay um oh yeah what was he talking about we're, we're, oh three cliffs three cliffs yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. three so, cliffs it's pretty beautiful i've actually got some just... pictures behind me i don't know if you can see those are like down the gower as well like in my bedroom okay. is that the so, three cliffs um that's not that's actually llangenis and oh actually that is that other one is where i was thinking so i don't know if that's a coincidence but that 
that second picture there, um, that's where I was thinking. So there's a place called Bracelet Bay and there's some, a lovely little restaurant down there. Um, and I would think that that would be my Instagram shot um, for that one. And then for my just for my doesn't matter where I am type of thing, I would actually go back to. So when I when I was living in New Zealand, I worked at a craft beer bar. Um, it was called the Fork and Tap. Shout out to the Fork and Tap guys. If any of you are listening. Good name. Good name. Yeah, the Fork and Tap. It was really cool. Um, it was a really, really great place, actually, because I met like a load of um, really lovely people all around my age, all traveling, like doing lots of interesting things. And we all ended up having like a really great friendship group. But one of the best things about working at a craft beer bar is obviously getting to taste all the craft beers. Yeah. So it, I suppose it was quite picturesque because it was like, so it was in Arrowtown, a place in Arrowtown, which is just outside of Queenstown. And it's in like this um, like valley. So you do have all the mountains and stuff around you, but it's just like not like it's, it's in the middle of the town though. So there wouldn't have been any sort of money shot if you get me. Otherwise I probably yeah, would have yeah. chosen that. But um, amazing. Like um, they had a massive like garden. So you could do like loads of outdoor drinking. I love day drinking. Like day drinking is one of my favorite yeah. things as well. <laughs> it's better than night drinking. Yeah, I agree. In, yeah. Drink at seven, eight o'clock. I think we're showing our age like let's yeah, not talk about that <laughs> but they used to have like sunday sessions as well so they'd have like a band on every sunday and that sort of thing and obviously you get like the most crazy beers i remember like i couldn't remember like i can remember what it tastes like but i couldn't remember if i like liked it or disliked it which is probably why it's mixed up in my head but there was like a chocolate and raspberry beer yeah okay and i was just a bit like do i like this don't i like this i like, don't know it was a bit random but anyway we got to taste loads and loads of um craft beers out there and they were all like local um so that was really nice beer like craft beer out there is a big thing what's it called the fork and fork and tap fork and tap okay that's <laughs> it's a good name yeah it's, it's a good, good name. name so that's your that's going to be your first um item on your happy list beer yeah well just having a pint the concept of having a pint more so then the idea of like a specific beer itself it's the yeah. almost ritual do you want to go for a beer and have yeah. a pint with someone yeah so if you were having applied. like if you were having like a pretty rough day or you weren't feeling so great or whatever you could open up your list and you'd be like actually i can have a pint right now that would probably make me feel better is that what you're saying uh yeah however i will say don't always go to having a pint to make yourself feel better <laughs> if every day you're looking on that list and seeing pint and having one uh maybe address why you're having a pint every day but yeah. no the ritual of having a pint with someone I think lots of I think really great ideas uh really great friendships and lots of things have been bonded and and created over a pint I think yeah. it's quite a an important thing that knowledge especially now when everybody would do anything like be in the bar yeah on the pub in their local boozer having a pint with their best mate so I'm actually going to um do a little plug here for Ryan as well so you listened to the first podcast who featured Ryan and yep. his um, like business is actually called Ideas and Beers. And obviously the idea came from oh, having a pint of beer. Yeah. So yeah, it's a little community down here um, where literally we've got like a, um, a bunch of people that get together um, and it's like a safe space to discuss ideas, like have a pint if you want to. Obviously it's not um, necessarily like you don't have to, you're not obliged. But um, mostly like we hold each other accountable, like lots of business owners come as well where they like, or even if they want to start a business and they like bounce off everyone, like projects, that sort of thing. So it's really nice. And that was started over having a pint. So ah, you yeah. did tell us about this in the winter when we're in Austria. You're telling oh, yeah. us about it. He'll be really I didn't pleased. know that was Ryan's. Ah. Yeah. He'll be, hey, Ryan, okay. if you're listening. Yeah. If Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, if you listen, she is going around the whole of Europe promoting, promoting know, your ideas. So I know. Play. We've got a WhatsApp group as well. So I'll post it in the group. Not everybody has to listen to this because they're being featured. So... <laughs> Moving on then, so as is tradition, I usually share um, an item from my happy list and the past couple of episodes I've thought in advance about what I wanted to share but today I've actually got it in front of me so this is my little gratitude book that I've got my happy list in the middle, sneak peek. Yep. Um, and today I was like, do you know what, I'm just going to see where this, I'm just going to see what, what I feel like because I didn't know what you were going to talk about. <laughs> So the one I've chosen to discuss or to share is, because again, as you were talking now saying, oh, it's relevant to us too, is planning travels. Oh, yeah, that is good. 
So I get really excited when I'm just like looking at flights, looking at destinations, looking at like things to do or places to go. And I think like one of my big secrets of life, um, I think like there's a key to happiness. And one of the keys is having something to look forward to. And like, that's obviously not always necessarily traveling or like going away or anything that can just be anything to look forward to. But for me personally, like going to new places and seeing new things and meeting new people and doing new things like that always brings me so much joy. So like, I feel like the planning of it and the anticipation of it like feeds into that for me. Yeah, hundred percent. It's part of the, for instance, I know you don't say it's not just traveling. It could be anything like booking, <coughs> pardon me, um, a day away or just um, maybe something that's coming out, like an album or some music or a film that you're looking forward to or a date that yep. you've got set in your diary or something like that. Um, yeah, I think that's when the experience starts, the minute you book that thing in. Um, say, for instance, you book a holiday, it's an easy one to choose, in three months. Over those three months, you get unlimited, like, daydreaming. Yes. Of just sitting yes. in the house and thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to be going on this holiday. You can go on the website now with the amount of, like, material you can research. Like I'm on Google Street View, looking at where I'm going to be staying, like oh getting as much God. information as I yes. can because that's all part of the price and what you paid and part of the experience. And I know what you mean. It's like, yeah, it's like banking in like three months of happiness. Yeah, it is. I, I, yeah. I genuinely feel like when I've got nothing to look for, like sometimes I go through these like motions and I'm like, oh, what is wrong with me? Why can't I just like get myself out of this like feeling and then I realize it's because I've got nothing to look forward to that is like yeah. I feel like that is honestly like a key to being happy and like I said like my my things to look forward to generally revolve around trips and going places that's not to say that's everyone's but I'm not gonna I'm I don't mean to rub salt in the wound but I am gonna ask you and I'm really sorry but obviously this summer you had some big plans yeah um, they're on hold for now but why don't you share where you were planning on going and some of the things that you were planning on doing um so I was going to continue obviously um working abroad um a couple of things really I don't even know if I've mentioned this to you this, this is this is the most first world problem ever so like I really <laughs> need to not be taken out of context here and think that okay. I'm whinging on about these very nice <laughs> things in my life that have been cancelled like I'm very comfortable in the situation I'm in so uh, but, yeah I was but we going. should mention I just want to say though you have worked like like you said how many seasons like 11 odd seasons or something you have yeah. worked like basically your whole adulthood to get to a point where you have been able to um sort of work off freelance wherever you want to so that it's not like a first world problem because like you've you've worked for that you've put in yeah, yeah, yeah. put in the time so the fact that you had all these things to look forward to it is gutting like obviously it's on hold for now but you you you're not like spoiled you have worked for it that's I just want yeah. to put that out there that's nice that makes us feel a little bit better Cheers, <laughs> you are Cheers, me. thank you uh yeah no so I'm um, obviously working in the travel industry um again it's quite obviously a luxurious uh industry to work in but nonetheless I think it's quite an important one for yourself as you mentioned people booking holidays um it's the form of getaway it's one of the big driving parts of the job that i enjoyed was the fact that you might be in a job you don't enjoy but you've saved up money and you've booked this holiday six months in advance and for six months you're feeling really really good and excited for this thing and to be able to travel and go abroad and uh spend your money on kind of broadening your horizons is really really lovely yeah uh, and the fact obviously everyone's had that impact in this summer um is, is a big headache for people not only going on holiday but people working in the travel industry yeah. um i was meant to be well i don't think my corona would have cancelled this before the lack of snow this winter would have cancelled it but i was supposed to be skiing in italy this week which would have been uh would have been quite nice so that's obviously been knocked on the head where were you um, going out of curiosity this is for me only obviously <laughs> oh don't ask us the name mate uh it's not one that i i've, I've never i've skied quite a few places in italy and i've never skied before um where was it? The, it's near Livigno. Oh, I was supposed to go to Livigno for Easter, so. Montpellier. Mont Montpellier. Oh, okay. Well, that's ringing bells for me. That might be a place. Don't quote us on that. That's so bad. Well, the trip's cancelled, so I don't actually really need to know where it is. But I was really looking forward to it, as you can see, from knowing the name of it. We're meant to be going there with a lot of the, um, the dope and the ride store team. So um, that end of season party got cancelled, unfortunately. 
Mm-hmm. Um, next month, uh, we're supposed to be going to Sweden for work for a week, which has obviously been cancelled. Uh, and then also going to Spain um, with my friend Holly to stay in a lovely villa for a week, which is again cancelled. And then obviously, as you say, the the kind of um, bit of sweetness of of finding some extra work that you've got that's remote. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're working from home, and so <laughs> it's a it's a nice thing that you can work from home, but. Yeah. You finally get a job where you can work remotely and you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to travel here and I'll do a month here and I'll, I'll kind of bounce around Europe and I can work from wherever I want to, oh yeah, you've got to stay at home. <laughs> so like Your bedroom. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a kick in the nuts. So yeah. I'm hoping at the end of the summer, there's maybe like um, a little bit of a window to, to even maybe get away like, I don't know, maybe October, November. I haven't got a clue. I don't want to speculate yeah. on it now, but um yeah, just a difficult time for everybody in the travel industry. Anyone who I've worked like colleagues, past colleagues and, and current colleagues and stuff, it does it does really suck. So I know yeah. planning a holiday and traveling and stuff like that is really kind of, um, it's a big factor to a lot of people. I know it can vary from a weekend away to mm-hmm. a weekend in Spain to two weeks in Mexico to six months yeah. backpacking. And it has obviously had a big impact on Yeah. Do you on know what though? On. This too shall pass. Was it Gandalf yeah, who said no, that? This too yeah. Pass. yeah everything passes mate was it gandalf the gray or gandalf the white i'm not sure one of them uh, it, was it, <laughs> i don't know i'm assuming it was the, the pass. i'm not sure okay i know it's gandalf the gray that said you shall not pass oh yeah it was maybe i'm getting confused <laughs> this too shall pass maybe it's not gandalf when you find his coat in that because okay. it's probably some kind of really like intellectual and we're like i know so i'll get some horrible look. quotes later like uh, some horrible comments later like what you don't know your stuff but my question was going to be so like if um in for example three weeks that uh, everything goes back to normal ish where we are allowed to travel and freely and whatever or give like the first instance where we can go out about again what's number one on your hit list where are you planning oh Okay, that's a good one. So whenever we can travel, where would I go? Okay, well, actually, I'll answer it in like kind of a non-realistic way because I'll most likely be going back to Austria is the first okay. place that I'll be going back to yeah. um, just for kind of personal reasons and stuff. Um, but if I could go anywhere, I don't know. I really kind of want to go back to Portugal. Ooh, I've just, nice. I, I've been to Portugal before and I went to Madeira a few years ago, which was, was not really the same, but I've heard really good things about kind of... Um, the kind of surf and yoga scene there and although I can't surf, surf or do, or do yoga, yoga. <laughs> I thought you I could can go try and try. yeah I thought I could go and tra- I can be like steezy enough to like you walk can, around in my flip-flops and that and be like you man. you can take your Instagram pics <laughs> yeah okay yeah I can be Instagram your aesthetic to... beer pics yeah okay I could be there in uh, in body but maybe not in soul yeah maybe <laughs> no I've heard lots of good things I've got a lot of friends who've been to Portugal um, on these kind of retreats and stuff and my um, brother-in-law Mark has um, has been away and he just absolutely loved it so uh, yeah. I think Portugal yeah somewhere somewhere a bit warm I think after the winter a bit warm. yeah a bit of although bones. we've had some lovely weather over here at the moment can't complain it is very very nice at the minute yeah you're gonna think I'm really boring with mine I don't think I'm boring but you're gonna think I'm boring because I would stay in Wales but I would go up to North Wales in my van like I am dying to go out on my van honestly um and i would go to the have you seen the caves underground caves with all like the trampoline yeah bounce below yeah i would go yeah. like that is on my list like i have to go there but i've been thinking about it since like forever since i saw the article like on it years ago and i was like right i'm taking my van up there i'm having like a good old jolly up there I'm gonna climb snowdonia and do like white water oh, rafting mate. and everything can I, I come and do that? Can I was, gonna, I was literally just going to say, you want to come, don't you? I'll come yeah. to Bounce Below. My mate's been and she absolutely loved it. So yeah. um, I did plan on coming down to Wales this summer as well because I want to... You did. Um, I forgot about that. Yes, you did. The combination of, of that remote job and, and having a friend with a van <laughs> was very appealing uh, to me. So I thought I might just come and gate crash your van the way that you gate crash my house. Well, yeah, you know, now that you, you opened those doors. So, I mean it's just for life now isn't it wherever you go i will show up and likewise for you lovely mate it sounds like a <laughs> it sounds like a, a win and a loss at the same time <laughs> a blessing yeah. and a curse I... but no if you get the van up and running mate that's so... going to be really really lovely and yeah so you can um you can travel around and, and interview people with about their happy lists 
from the oh, from that's the van. such a nice idea that is a really that's nice idea i tell you what else is up studio. there yes um there's also the zip wire i think it's like a really long zip wire mm. longest in somewhere maybe over the quarry Wales. yes i think so so that's something to do as well but generally i think like north wales is literally one of the most beautiful places anyway so um obviously full of mountains and lakes and what we what we like is uh, the is the Welsh Tourism Board funding this podcast? <laughs> uh, every episode I'm like... sorry, I'm Welsh, okay? I, it's my point of reference right now. That's all I've got going for me. <laughs> if I could have a beer anywhere in the world, it'd be it Wales. It would be Wales. <laughs> if I could travel anywhere in the world, it would, it would be, be Wales. Wales. I think and it's also, just... <laughs> uh, you know the Dolomites, Tom? Um, also, remember Wales? <laughs> so if anyone does remember... Um, Am I as Welsh? Um, yes, I am. But what <laughs> actually, so that would be my realistic one because you give a realistic one and you give a non realistic one, didn't you? Yeah. You give, so your realistic one was Austria and my realistic one was Wales. But my non realistic one, I think, would be like um, somewhere in Southeast Asia, like Vietnam mm. or, yeah, uh, like, yeah, somewhere down there, I think. Because I've not really done Asia at all. And obviously, that is like, a big deal for people um in general when they go traveling so and everyone raves about it and it's just something i need to do so i'd probably that's my unrealistic one fair enough we'll make it a realistic one we'll make it realistic after after i've been in caves <laughs> yeah exactly yeah we'll, caves we'll first. Way up. yeah absolutely so um that kind of concludes another episode we've like chatted for a really uh, for a while as per usual Imagine if we be- did have like a beer, like we'd be here for hours. Mate, how long have we been chatting for? I knew I would chew your ears off because when we start talking, <laughs> when we start talking, we never, we never start so talking. That's so true. That's so true. Um, I don't know, like 40 minutes, maybe, maybe longer. Oh, very nice. But yeah, it's a nice, um, but this is kind of the point where I let you promote yourself. Um, so you can share your oh. handles and let everyone see your beautiful pictures. So go for oh, it. Mate. I don't like the whole plugging myself, but. Yeah, just just me, just just me, Tom Quantrill in life. <laughs> just search for me and wherever you go in bars, restaurants, public spaces, <laughs> Google, maybe give it a Google, Instagram, just search for me and see what happens. Yes, definitely. Tom Quantrill for everyone that doesn't speak South Shields. <laughs> yeah, okay. And you'll probably spell the name in the in the title of the I will. The I'll put your yeah. name in there. And then yeah. for everyone else, so um the hashtag for this is actually share your happy list. So if you want to do yep. that, you can take that on board, Tom, but for everyone else as well. So let me see if you are engaging, starting your happy lists. Like I feel like now is a time where we need sort of to remind ourselves about what makes us happy and maybe little things that we can do to take care of ourselves. So we might not be able to float in water, but we might be able to have a pint with our dads, for example. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Yeah, so um, share your happy list. And then my handle is at EXLP on Instagram. Um, but obviously anyone can just drop me a message whenever I post these on all of the social channels. And that concludes. Lovely, mate. Very, very nice chatting to you. Yeah, I, it's um, been such a pleasure. Going to go make some tea and... Uh... Yeah, I'm actually going to get some out. exercise because I've literally done 1,257 steps today, which is... <laughs> That's shocking, that means. I, I, I am working from home, I should, I should clarify. So I do have to sit at my desk for a while. But yes, I'm going to go make up my steps now. <laughs> yeah, mate. 10K, 10K by the end of the day. 10K by the end of the day. Yeah, that's the goal. That is the goal. It's doable. It's doable, mate. Yes. Anyone enjoy your steps? Enjoy your steps. Thank Have you. Enjoy your evening. tea. But like, that's dinner for everyone that doesn't speak to our shields. <laughs> Sweet dude, have a good one. Ciao, ciao. We'll, we'll speak soon. Ciao, ciao. Love you, bye.